So we're canning up about half a year's worth of applesauce for my family. Welcome back again today, friends, for my next massive food preservation attempt. Oh yes, it is going down. If you remember, it went down in Banana Town, <laughs> and now we'll just call this Applesauce Town. We are processing all the apples, and I told you, Travis got me some fantastic attachments for my KitchenAid mixer, and he has figured these out. All we have to do is put Mr. Travis to work. Look at that action there. It is peeling the apple, slicing the apple, coring the apple. He's got a whole assembly line situation going on there. So we went ahead and got our applesauce making station set up earlier on this particular day and I had Travis help me process these apples while I did a lot of homeschool activities with the kids but I was also taking some time to get the roaster set up. This was here during a little break so we could start cooking down some of these apples you can see we filled several 30 quart mixing bowls and I just start putting the apples in the roaster ovens I believe it's a 20 quart roaster oven and a 22 or 27 just a one is a big size one's a little bigger <laughs> so whatever those sizes are yep that's my original red one that I've had um, maybe six or so years now got lots of good use out of that one and I'm putting the apples in I'm also going to add a little bit of water just to help prevent them burn on the sides they're going to also cook down and make their own juice I've done a lot of videos in the past about doing homemade applesauce yes and eating apples um, in the slow cooker and I've also done apple butter many times in my slow cooker but now I'm doing it super mega size so we can do some food preservation with canning I will let you know my whole applesauce math and canning goals coming up here shortly I'm also going to use my 15 quart Dutch oven and probably my 30 quart stock pot as well didn't think that on this food preservation day we would get out the super mega mama 60 quart stock pot but who knows it might make an appearance now I also have some dinner going in my slow cooker this is actually the very first time I plugged a slow cooker in to use in my mega mama kitchen and you see we do actually run out of bananas once in a while this is one of those rare days where there's no bananas available and we will have a few days like that here and there and then we load up again. So here are all the apples. We have them in bags. We have them in boxes. And again, Travis is processing these down. We have a variety of apple flavors as well. And you see we have all of those apple scraps. So our pigs, you know in my last mega food preservation video, <laughs> our Cooney Coonies told us they did not like peppers in any form. Okay, but they absolutely love apple slices, apple scraps, apple peelings, apple cores. They will just eat those all the time. We actually had a pig get out last week and we were able to get it back in once we got the apple slices out. And here's just a little little peek at what some of the younger kiddos are doing at this point. We've got lots of blocks and tile magnets going on as well. So things are happening, all kinds of things are happening in the kitchen at this point. And I'm going to add about four cups of water to each roaster. And I do go back. We were in the middle of doing our homeschool read aloud time at this point. Lots of folks want to know, how do I get food preservation done and homeschool done? It totally helps that my husband is home to run these apples through and get them sliced and cored and peeled down for me running those very convenient KitchenAid attachments. So we're able to tag team, but we all get to be in the same room together now that this mega kitchen is done. So that was super helpful. Now I will say I did have both roaster ovens plugged into this surge protector. The reason I did that was just to place them conveniently on the counter. We of course have a lot of outlets in this counter, but 
both roaster ovens plugged into the surge protector. That surge protector did not like it. The outlets were fine, but the surge protector said, I don't think we should be doing this. So, so Travis suggested that I do not plug both roast, roaster ovens into the surge protector and I just move them to another location on the island and that's what we did. Well, happy late afternoon now. We are done with our big homeschool day, all the big stuff going down. Travis got so many apples processed while we were doing school stuff and such. I'm looking at, we'll have to, I, I can't leave my slow cooker right now. Getting ready to do something with the slow cooker, but yet I'm talking. So there's another big 30 quart bowl of apples and I'm gonna get that going in my 30 quart stock pot on the stove. And I also have this 15 quart Dutch oven just in case our trash bags are being taken out so you're probably hearing the plastic. For dinner tonight, we are having Southwestern chicken bowls. The chicken breast needs to be shredded. I'm just gonna take two, two forks and a knife and go at it. I'm not doing anything too serious like using a mixer with it or anything because I can, I, I can, mama can do it, mama can do it with the forks here and then it's gonna continue. It'll shred on down um, as the afternoon continues but I'm just gonna help it out a little bit. Sometimes I need to take it out and put it on a plate. So with the apple, Plan. I gotta check my roasters and I did add a little bit of water about how many cups was that I guess I added about eight cups of water to each roaster just because I knew it was gonna be a lot of apples and I knew it would need some help also to help it as far as burning or not burning because I knew we'd be busy with school here and with this dinner see I'm pacing myself because we're also going to church tonight but here I am with a couple hours this afternoon during the in-between time. So, just trying to make the most of my time. Let's see, let me put this chicken back for now. Um, see, that's just coming right apart. You just didn't even need to come out. So, this will just take me maybe two minutes. Then I'm gonna get those other apples on the stove going and we will check in the roasters. So this is one of my slow cooker freezer meals. I have shared the recipe before, and I made up several slow cooker freezer meals a couple months ago. And like I've mentioned in a few videos, I still have a few of those that need used up. I am ever so hopeful that in a few days I'm getting to, one is really gonna be like a freezer meal prep day, but then the next day on a Saturday, I should have the whole day uninterrupted and I'm excited to get a ton of freezer meals. I mean, 40, 80, 120, we're going for it to get a ton of this stuff that's in the freezers made into easy freezer meals that are ready to go. I am going to be using many of my large family freezer meal packs that are over at shop.largefamilytable.com. We're gonna be doing breakfast and lunches and dinners, so many great things. So to get this and also my local John Henry General Store came through again. They have this uh, cash deal Wednesday situation going on and I took advantage of yet another amazing deal that they had today because I know in coming weeks I can can it. It was basically a dollar a piece. Three for a dollar acorn squash, three for a dollar butternut squash. I sent a teenager over there with cash to get mama 20 of each. I was doing the math on it and then some I wanna use for fresh cooking and not necessarily for canning. But I also know they hold well, so even if I can't get them to get to them for a week or so, it'll be okay. But the deal, the deal was today. And so since I have, yay, both my roaster ovens going on the island now, I'm going to get another load of apples in the 30 quart stock pot and get those cooking down as well. Just moving one of my canners out of the way and loading up the apples. Just a little, just to help it out. 
And now it's a little later and I am just checking in on my apples. I'm going to take my big wooden spoon and just flip them over a little bit, make sure nothing is sticking to the sides and get them continued to cook down. And now I am going to work on actually making these cooked apples into applesauce. Okay, we got Tobin in here. We might be talking and doing stuff. He just got up for his nap. And Travis just went out with Daniel and Benjamin to pick up some kitties from the vet. So it's some of our afternoon excitement. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my immersion blender. I'm gonna I'm going to also add some lemon juice and some a little bit of sugar. Not too terribly much though. So usually I buy the unsweetened applesauce at Walmart. And if you tour the grocery store in my basement video that I did by request um, several weeks ago, sorry, earring hair, uh, I showed you we had quite a bit of applesauce. But when I do my applesauce math and like how I know things go, I don't really have, let's see, do I have two months of applesauce? So the kids go through, okay, so get ready for applesauce math. The kids go through about three of those 48, I'm gonna come a little closer because Tobin's adding into the conversation. Cow. Kitty. Mouth. Mau Mau? I don't have a Mau Mau, but we were talking about the kitties. And the cow? Moo? Cow. Cow. Moo. 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 And what do the piggies do? Sorry, we gotta stop for baby noises. What do the piggies do? Their noises? They're not that way. Look at mommy. Piggies? Gabriel. Gabriel. Okay. Oh, oh, you're making the piggy noises now. Okay. So anyway, if you hear anyone calling out, I think he wants Gabriel. You want to go to see the animals with Gabriel. Is that probably, that's probably what's happening. He's making up a plan over there. Okay, anyway. Back to my applesauce math after this little barnyard chat. Friends, as I was, so I was going to bed last night, I decided to write out my applesauce math for you. Uh, so we currently go through three of the 40 ounce containers a week from Walmart. A lot of that happens when we eat oatmeal or it can also just be for a snack. Um, so it's roughly four and a half quarts, but we're just gonna go ahead and round up a little bit to five. So that would mean if I was going to can enough applesauce for a whole year, which is my goal because I think I can do that and I'll tell you why. Uh, but anyway, I, but I would need 260 quarts of applesauce for my kids for one year. So on the, the National Center for Food Preservation site, it says from a bushel of apples, you can get about 14 to 19 quarts. Uh, and we have total about seven bushels of apples here. There's still a box and a bag for, apparently we put Travis on this job for Travis to run through. So maybe he's when he's done getting the cats from the vet with the kids, he can finish those. So we should, from all these apples, this go round get about 98 to 133 quarts. And the good news is the reason why I think, oh no, you dropped it. Can you get another one? I'll be right back, hold on. It's, it's serious, mom, 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 mom. And the reason why I think I can accomplish this goal for the applesauce, for the Mega Viva applesauce is, it's like, when I'm filming this, it's beginning of October. I'm in the Shenandoah Valley. Apple orchards are everywhere. I shared in a recent video how several of these apples we got from the Hurricane Harvest Day. I bought, set, I bought four bushels for $12 a bushel. Two other bushels I had bought maybe two weeks before for $19 a bushel. Yes. Ooh, you dropped some more, but there's more right now. Uh-oh. It'd it be okay. Can you get the ones right there by your cup? Look at your cup. Nice. <laughs> Sorry, mama redirection there. Plus, 
I didn't really add this in, so we'll see if we end up with a little bit more applesauce. Um, the kids had some pecs that they had earned whenever we did the hurricane harvest. That, that was part of their payment. They got the pecs, they each got half a gallon of apple cider, and they each got six donuts. So I mean, it was a glorious day for all. <laughs> okay, anyway, I have some of their apples that they didn't eat. They were very diligent about eating their apples they earned, which is fantastic, I'm sure, get an extra apple. But anyway, some of them donated apples to this applesauce endeavor as well. So, because for the next few weeks, um, the next three to four weeks here in the Shenandoah Valley, sorry, multiple things going on outside my house now, and it sounds like the house is falling down, but that's blocks with Tobin. <laughs> um, I think I can get another seven to eight bushels and finish up for the whole year. Like you all know, I have sporadically canned, but I'm not a canning expert. I am following the Ball Blue Book of Canning, also the National Center for Food Preservation. Also, I've been using the book that came with my Presto pressure canners. That's very helpful. And what's the other one I have? Oh, the Complete Guide to Canning by the USDA. So those are all the resources that I'm using. There's also a really nice site called healthycanning.com. And that's where the conversions to how many quarts you can get from so many pounds is also on the National Center for Food Preservation and in these books. But I found myself last night looking at the healthycanning.com site a lot and I was doing my applesauce math. So we're canning up about half a year's worth of applesauce for my family. And I have done applesauce before. I've done it in more recent years just in the slow cooker. And it was more like in the refrigerator, cold, and we just ate it. I mean, even a even a ten quart slow cooker isn't a lot. Also, I've done a lot of apple butter in my slow cooker. Ooh, you busy? You busy? And actually, so what was happening earlier is, of course, all the electrical in here is perfect and pure and holy, but this particular surge protector, it was not letting me run both my roasters on this. So, we worked with it. But I should be able to run my merchandise. It's fine. And I've run cameras off of this. Too. Oh no, what happened? Please. He's doing his little, his little please sign. Oh no, you need mommy to get it? Do you need a bite? Are you hungry? You want to eat? Watch mommy. I'm going to make a noise. You ready? Oh, Ben. I think you should see what mommy's going to do. This is pretty amazing. And since my family usually does the unsweetened applesauce, <laughs> see when I stop to talk, he, he's like, mommy's talking, let's do things. <laughs> what? Okay, I have to entertain my kid. Remind me to come back and tell you my thoughts on the sugar. Okay. So here I'm using my immersion blender to make my applesauce. You can do a smoother applesauce or a chunky applesauce. So what I was saying, you want to tell them, Toby? What I was thinking was that I'm just going to try like one cup of sugar. Sugar is not required for the preserving. You don't even have to preserve it. But since I'm taking my family from Walmart applesauce, served us well yeah. to homemade home canned applesauce and again I've done it in the slow cooker and I've done apple butter but they always have a bunch of sugar dumped in them so I'm trying to use this even just one cup for all of this just a just a touch ease, ease us into it nice Tobin oh you can't reach that I see that I see that that's gonna be a problem so we should be able to get uh, 28 30 some quarts going at a time. I have my two electric digital pressure canners over here that can also be used as a water bath canner. Then I have two water bath canners on the stove. I also have my other two stove top pressure canners, my Presto ones that we can also use. So, I'm hopeful we'll get a bunch going here. And time-wise, it's going to work out. We're going to still get to dinner and 
get to church and all those things. So for those of you who, if, you, if you're new to my videos, you may not know my videos can run a couple weeks behind real time. So when I am recording this voiceover, I want to update you that here in the future, the couch has been returned. If you've been following my couch chair, canyon wall adventures, uh, I did keep the couch that you see in the background for two weeks until the furniture store could pick it up. I talked to it. I tried it out. I thought about my feelings with it. And I just felt at the end that it was best that they take the couch back. I did keep my chair because I love the chair. And I could also futuristically use that in our new big living room. So just a little couch update. The couch is gone. I have a whole new fantastic situation that's going to happen there so that the big windows can be left open. So stay tuned for that. That'll be coming up in upcoming videos. So I'm getting my whole production line set up. And so now I am just putting my empty clean jars in the different canners so that the jars can start to warm. Okay, so how's mom canning this afternoon, especially with dad gone? Well, I have a teenager and they're doing the, the farm tour with Tobin this afternoon, so that's helpful. Uh, but it all helps them. Let's also get out the door this evening and still have dinner. We can do it, teamwork. So I absolutely love these electric digital pressure canners. I got one because I saw our friend we all know and love, Becky over at Acre Homestead. I got it. It has been all of my hopes and dreams with being able to do some canning and still do things like leave the kitchen and go out on a nature walk with the kids and those kind of fun adventures. Go pick hickory nuts, but yet the canner is here on the counter. It's so fantastic. It's all my hopes and dreams. So I got a second one because that way I can do 10 quarts of anything at a time. Again, the big benefit with those is when I have my other pressure canners going on the stove, I have to be here in the room the whole time. At any given point during our homeschool day, I am in here and if I'm able to, let's say at lunchtime, and I'll be showing you more of this, get the canners going, that's cool. But I can get these going in the morning or even in the evening. I mean, I can, it's just like an Instant Pot pretty much. Not saying to can in your Instant Pot, don't do that. These particular digital pressure canners from Presto, you can find them on Amazon, I'll link them below. If you are a homeschooling mom who is also trying to get canning into your day, I tell ya, I think, I think we're onto something here with these. I really do because I don't have to babysit. It's something else I don't have to babysit. Yay! So. I can also water bath can. I've been doing pressure canning in those. I'm sure you've seen that in those videos by this point. But I'm get, I have the water in there and I'm getting my jars heated up. I've just been flipping them upside down when I've needed to warm them. I'm not worried about sterilizing them because everything's gonna run longer than 10 minutes. And as long as it runs longer than 10 minutes, you don't have to pre-sterilize. So I've got both of those going. I have two water bath canners with jars warming up. And now I'm gonna get my two Presto 23 quart pressure canners going on the stove. You can also water bath can in those. That way I'm gonna have a seven pot applesauce canning jar situation. Let's do math, seven times seven. We're gonna be doing 49 quarts of applesauce at one time, I'm excited. We have worked for this, friends. We, we live for this, right? We've been waiting so long this past year for this Mega Mama kitchen. You know if I do anything, it's Mega and lots, and I got to the point in that baby kitchen where I'm like, Mama needs some elbow room. So here we are, we got the elbow room, we're dancing, we're dancing, we got the roaster ovens, canners on the side, the stove, getting all covered and stuff. Yay, let's go. Alrighty, and then thank you Travis, there's an outlet right here. He knew I would need to use the immersion blender right up in this stove. Alright. Another use for having a great big sink right here, I can just set a hot lid in it. Yay. Alright, a little bit going on. Now this is not quite as much apples that were in the roaster. So
Yes, with the lids off. Liam is going to help me. I think I'm going to need some more jars. And so even though I said they don't need to be sterilized, they still should be washed. Can you squirt the um, dish soap in here, honey, while you're doing that? And this is, oh, I, I can't talk and use my immersion blender. This is a situation where I know, Jim, I'll use your dishwashers, but the thing is the dishwashers, like they run for two or three hours. There's no time for that. So I'm just gonna do a quick hand wash on those jars. And actually, friends, now that I'm here recording this voiceover for you, I'm remembering the whole pig situation. Now, poor past Jay Morrell. <laughs> Remember when I said a pig got out about a week ago and we used apples to catch it? Well, actually, that happened on this very night where I am filming all of my applesauce and I am also wanting to serve dinner and get out the door to church. Oh just look at her there. Look past Jay Morrell. She's moving her pot. She's doing her things. She thinks it's all going to work out time-wise, but little does she know the pig is getting out. Don't worry, this pot is not even a quarter of the way full. So I know, because y'all care, you'll be saying, hey, Morel, don't move it, but it's really, it wasn't that full. So I'm just filling my prep sink with just some hot soapy water and I'm going to rinse all the jars and the lids and rings that came with those in there and we're gonna get them out and dried off quickly. And then we will begin warming those to put the applesauce in for canning. And again, at this point, at this point, past Jay Morrell does not know the pig situation, okay? But future Jay Morrell here is telling you, I, I don't even remember if I shared this in the video, but I, I want to tell you more behind the scenes. Um, there is a, a big pig escape event that we had not had on our farm yet. Now we have had our pig since May, so that's a good five months and we haven't had any escaping situations, which I think, you know, as new pig farmers, that's pretty decent. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm, we just, we just know it's coming. And so here though, oblivious <laughs> to what awaits in my future, I am still getting jars warming in my pots here to also fill with applesauce and can. And I had read on, I believe it was the Simply Canning blog, where she just suggested to put the jars upside down in the canners while they warm to slowly warm the jars. You want to have warm food going in warm jars. You want to try to not have cold food going in hot jars. or And you also don't want hot food going in cold jars. You want to increase the temperature so basically you don't want to shock your jars so they end up cracking although that happens to me once in a while too whoop 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 yep losing losing my immersion blender there but that's okay that thing sure comes in handy and that's just the a little inexpensive hamilton beach one but it's a cheapy but it's great all righty so now i'm going to set up my little production line and get filling jars finish my afternoon not when i finished it it was good Okay, my little mom treat. So now I am just going through, I am getting my warmed jars out and I am going to then go and put my homemade applesauce in each jar. I have my little ball jar lifter glove there, which helped me get them out. 
I believe I've read that some ladies put their jars through the dishwasher again just on a warm setting to warm them up that way. I haven't done that, but you can let me us know in the comments below your favorite way to warm your jars. And so we do get better at this applesauce pouring here as the evening goes on, but at this point I'm using my funnel and I'm using my four cup liquid measure, measuring cup there to work on filling each jar. I do lay a towel there as well as my jar lifter. And again, each jar, the applesauce has been made to the consistency I think my family will like. And I added in a little bit of sugar and lemon juice. I'm going to fill each jar and then I will get the air bubbles out and wipe each rim with a little bit of vinegar on my cloth. And that will help the lids seal if there's any food particles. It will help prevent from the lid not sealing properly. And here I'm also checking to make sure that each jar of applesauce has the proper headspace. And also with my Southwest chicken bowls, I am just making it even easier and I am going to add the brown rice directly to the slow cooker so we are not having the Southwest chicken mix on top of rice. We're having the rice all integrated in. It's all about a one pot dinner that's even easier for mama. So here we go. And so when you want to add raw uncooked rice to a slow cooker meal, you just do it, on, I'm using brown rice in particular, so I like to do it about 45 minutes or so uh, at the very end before we're ready to eat. And that will give the rice enough time to cook and just become part of this meal, making it a one pot dinner. Now I could have cooked my rice separately and then I would have scooped rice in a bowl, then I would have scooped the Southwest chicken mix on top but this is how I decided to doctor it up tonight. And I'm gonna add a little broth to that. And now dinner will be a one pot meal and mama doesn't even have to worry about making no bowls. And now I'm just taking a plastic chopstick around and trying to get out any air bubbles that might be in my jar. I did just clean these rims with vinegar. Did not film that part. I also pressed around for any air bubbles. So we should be good to go here. And the way I'm gonna keep my time straight since I'm getting several going at one time, I'm just gonna write the start time for each canner on my whiteboard. These are supposed to go for 20 minutes each. But we're gonna be staggered here in our times. And just, okay.
So this pot that I did with these additional apples that Travis peeled for us, I got seven jars and I think I might get a total of eight, eight quarts from what I had in here. Supposed to have an inch head space, so I just go around with my little spoon. I do measure at the end and everything, but eyeballing it right now. Well, the best laid plans of Jay Morrell. Yeah. I am not making it to take the kids to church tonight. That's sad. Really, this project I was going to do yesterday, which was Tuesday, but I ended up with a stomach bug of some sort, and I did not get to this. I rested. So I was not planning to do this on a day where I was also trying to take them out in the evening for something else. I'm just, it's kind of like if I could, if I could have another half hour to 45 minutes added to this time, it could be pulled off. Well, more adventures in farming. We have had our Cooney Cooney pigs about six months now. And tonight, for the first time ever, we had a pig get out. So, I believe it was all in the Lord's plan that we were not to go to church tonight because it would have been a real problem if that pig and the other pigs that he was with would have gotten out and we would not have been home. So, we've been handling that, but we got him. It all worked out in the end. Little uh, family bonding over big pig catching, but we did it. Yay, go us. So, all three canners over here have finished with this, let's see, 21 quarts of applesauce. So now that the adrenaline has pumped and, and we have handled our business, I'm going to get, you know, let's do a nice peaceful activity. Let's get another canner going with applesauce. And then Let's get these two digital canners going. Who exhale, and then we will have dinner and we will like it, yay. Nothing like a little evening pig chasing and wrangling to get the blood pumping. I gotta tell you, more quick pig stories. So, we had grain. We quickly went and got pig feed. When I say grain, we just got pig feed. But, it was apples, actually. I told one of the kids, I was like, go in the refrigerator and grab food, because I mean, they love human food. <laughs> I was like, run, go get, just get something good out of the refrigerator. And so he grabbed a couple apples and he quickly sliced them, because Cooney Coonies can't handle a whole apple. And we got him in with apple slices. Now, these guys are big. I mean, they're Cooney Cooney, they're only gonna get so big. I feel like that pig was at least 200 pounds, because I was the one on the lead. Maybe, maybe he's not quite, he, they, they can be very, very strong. So Cooney Coonies are a fantastic, easy, gentle, homestead pig. A lot of small homesteads choose them because they're easy to handle. So we were able to get him, it all worked out. Wow, another little farming badge for our farming sash, just like brownies used to be. 
Whew, well, we, sh we should call this video, you know, <laughs> pig catching and applesauce, right? So we're hearing so much about the pigs, but hey, it it's what's really going on in real life here in my real life kitchen. Gee, Jim Merle, why can't you get all these things done? Well, I mean, things like, I don't know, the pig gets out. Uh, in another recent video, the video, if you remember back where I made the Sloppy Joes and um, folks were asking me why I was doing such an easy meal. It's like, well, I had just been a pig midwife and helped mama pig deliver her baby. So anyway, other farm and adventures. So now I am just walking back and forth with my applesauce and I am, these jars are warmed up and I am filling them with my applesauce mixture and we are doing it. There's our process going down and Gabriel is helping his mama. I had run out of kitchen towels and washcloths, so I was like, quick, quick, <laughs> somebody. I go through so many kitchen towels and washcloths when I do these big cooking projects. So he was helping me out and refilling our towel drawer and our washcloth drawer. And now these are jars that did complete the canning process, and I'm going to let them sit there for the next 12 to 24 hours whenever I can get back to them. At that point, I will then remove the lids, label them, make sure they're sealed. I don't leave the rings on. I'm sorry, I said lids, but I meant rings. I don't leave the rings on because I have since learned that can create a false seal. So once they're fully done after that 12 to 20, 24 hour waiting process, then I do remove the rings. I have had people tell me that it's good to leave the rings on to protect the edges of the jars to keep them from getting dinged. Um, but then I was learning about, we don't want to create a false seal either. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. So these have completely cooled now. So I'm just moving these off so I can use the board to set jars on. So, yay, got those jars unloaded. Gonna put lids on. I've cleaned these lids here. Uh, one thing with my jars that I've gotten out so far, I forgot to pour a little vinegar in each of my canners and the vinegar just helps the jars stay nice and clean. So oopsie on that. Whenever I do that, I just take some vinegar on a washcloth later. There's lids popping now, but they need to sit and cool for 12 to 24 hours. It'll probably be, well, yeah, probably be close to 24 hours. Um, anyway, I'll wipe them down then once they cool off, it'll be okay. But saves you a step from wiping them all down again. Saves me a step if I just put a little vinegar in the canner, that works out. I've had several kids ask me if I was saving applesauce <laughs> for them to eat now. And I was like, oh, huh. I, I didn't consider that. So, I'll look at how much is in the canner. I don't know. I don't, don't know what's next, but I need to go get another lid. Alrighty, now we'll go get our rings. <clears throat> Alrighty. I do have to feed my people dinner here. I'm missing my towel. Um, anyway, I want to fill this Pyrex bowl full of applesauce for the kids. Then we'll see. I know these digital pressure canners, they'll run five quarts. I've got another seven quarts. I'm getting the water to a roll in boil right now. So, so far that'll be 28 quarts canned. I don't know, I hadn't planned for this. Maybe it's going to be, I have my canning session, but I always have to hold some back <laughs> also, because the kids have, they've been coming through in between pig wrestling and uh, having taste tests and such, and they all really love it, so. Those thank you jars for popping. I'm gonna continue to let this cool also. It's not too boiling hot. I can stick my finger in it and taste test it. This is a vegetable keeper, but I also use it for other kitchen needs. We also had hay delivered and unloaded for the cow. Actually, while the kids and my mom and I were out one side of the house trying to catch the pig, Travis was out in the front of the house 
helping them unload round bales. So if anyone wants to know, where's Travis during all this? Well, we had a hay delivery and he was, he didn't know where we were <laughs> and we weren't thinking about him at the moment. So it's kind of funny. Again, I love going to church in the middle of the week when we can make it happen, but I'm thankful we didn't go tonight because wow, that could have, that could have been a real mess. Although farm life, Animals do know where they're fed and they get bonded to each other. So usually like if we have a goat get out or even the other day, we had Margaret out and uh, the, the, another story. But usually they stay with the animals that they're bonded with and they stay near where they know that they're fed. So we had a gate situation with the pig that is now fixed. Pop goes the applesauce cans. So, okay, yes, I was gonna let these sit here. Most likely what would have happened is the pig would have just, because these pigs are grass grazers, they love to eat grass. So it would have just stayed around the yard. It most likely would not have left the other pigs that it's in its little pig herd with. Um, but it could have led, the other pigs could have followed it. So anyway, mom's tired now, <laughs> but we're doing it. So got that canner going. Obviously we have dishes from our day that need washed and I have my other sink full of jars um, that need to be washed. And now I don't remember what, well, okay. now I don't remember what my original number was, my goal for the night. You tell me, probably you're all saying it now, uh, but it looks like 28 is gonna be it. Plus, however, however much this big bowl of applesauce is, and this big tub of applesauce is. But I can tell it's like a novelty with the kids. So they're gonna love it. They're going to eat it, it will not be a problem. And I'm not done, not done with you for today, but tomorrow, and I don't have, we don't have to go anywhere tomorrow. We don't have hay being delivered. We don't have cats going to the vet. Hopefully we don't have pigs getting out. What else? I forget what else happened today, but it was, it was a full day. Um, we have, it looks like one bag and one box of apples left. So probably a bushel or so. And then I have 80 pounds of pears from Azure. I don't know that I'm, I don't think I'm gonna get to the pears in this video, but, but before I start the pears, I will finish the apples and show you. Stick around to see how many we actually get canned. And to see, again, if any pig gets out or any, Anything else unexpected happens, who knows? Okay, so we have our rolling boil. I probably need to turn this down a little bit more. I set the timer for 20 minutes. I'm now just gonna run around the kitchen, pull some things together as well as I can. And when it's here, to time to serve dinner here, I don't know. Hopefully in 20 minutes, I'll have other family members come in and get drinks and set the table and we will put the slow cooker on the table, set out toppings, but I'm gonna work on all the other stuff. I think the first thing I need to do, something that'd be fairly easy for me to do, is get these jars rinsed. Again, there's more canning coming tomorrow. We're gonna finish the other bag and, yes, and box of apples, but tomorrow afternoon and evening, without also trying to go to church and wrestle pigs, I am going to can those pears, so I need all these jars that we washed and got ready this evening. So I'm going to get those out, and then once the sink is clear, I will have room for my big canning mess stuff. And whoever's on dishes tonight, they just need to get the household dishes, but I separately wash my big extra over and, over and uh, beyond situations here. I also wanted to say that I never got to water bath can in my digital uh, press, Presto pressure canners on this evening. And actually that would not have worked out how I was planning because I have since learned that I cannot water bath quarts in the new digital pressure canners. I can only water bath pints and I'm guessing that would also mean half pints as well. Uh, but quarts, there's not enough water over the top to make that possible, but pints can still be done. Again, you can look into the Presto digital pressure canner for more information. They even have the whole instruction book and user's manual online available too. It's the dance of not wanting things to be too hot in the slow cooker so we can actually eat it. 
but this is going to be, I've got 12 minutes left on my timer for my scanner. Sorry, I, I had a thought there. So I don't want to crack my slow cooker lid right now. I'll just leave it there all nice and warm, but I will take the lid off, like maybe five minutes or so before we eat. But it worked well. If you get in a jam like me and you're thinking, I'm supposed to serve this thing, whatever it is, over rice. If you have enough liquid in your slow cooker or sauce, you can just rinse your rice and go ahead and throw it in like the last 45 minutes to an hour if it's brown rice. Throw it in your meal, and then you're kind of making a casserole type situation. One hot meal there in your slow cooker. I'll be sure to link the recipe for that down below. Of course, the pictures for that will look a little different because that's the separated components bowls and friends i hope that we can get this um, video footage stabilized for you but in case it looks like we're wobbling back and forth on a ship i'm sorry i don't know what my camera was doing at this point um i had it up on a tripod on the table and right now when i'm watching this for the voiceover again it looks like we are on a ship uh, but hopefully that's a little better for you or don't worry it'll be over soon hold on tight more <laughs> more adventures await and so now i'm just finishing rinsing off the new jars that we had just opened that i'm going to use for more applesauce and also the 80 pounds of pear canning that we're going to do as our very next project coming up all righty eight minutes left let's try to get all my messy dishes in here and then i will hand wash those after dinner and now I am just washing out my roaster ovens and working on getting everything from today's projects cleaned up so we can start fresh tomorrow. Tomorrow we will have a full homeschool day, but we don't have to run out anywhere in the afternoon. And again, not so many like errands and hay delivery and cats to the vet and escaping pigs uh, on the following day. So we'll be able to do what we need to do school-wise, and then I'll be able to roll into my next big canning project. And it is late here. We are definitely having a late dinner, but that is the nice thing about living in my house, is even if I haven't served the proper meal, there's always lots of fruits and snacks available until Mama makes it happen. Okay, it's okay, just drink it. Okay, just, just drink it, right? All the Mama said amen. So, had dinner, we've done the cleanup, I've washed a bunch of stuff, I've talked myself out of some other things, let me show you. So I moved these jars back after dinner. Those will sit until tomorrow, then we'll wipe them down with just some vinegar and water so they don't look, you see how they look real dusty. Washed this stuff, I did, and I have this pot soaking. I don't think I have it in my heart now to scrub it. I think it's just gonna soak till morning. I moved those jars back over. This is how, this is our whole project counter, yay. And then I got those seven jars out of the canner. I've been doing so much, but now that I say these few things, I'm like, maybe I haven't done anything. And then we were just talking about, we have these two pineapples more than ready, so we need to slice them down at breakfast time. So friends, thank you so much for canning this applesauce with me. And if you think there's something fishy going on with my seven bushels of applesauce canning math, you're right. And we are going to dig into that great mystery in the next video that's coming up after this one. Thank you so much for watching this massive food preservation. I cannot wait to chat with all of you in the comments below. I love making these videos for you and I also so very much love all of our chats and conversation that happen in the comments. Thank you so much for watching today, friends, and I'll see you very soon with another brand new video and more farm escapes and more adventures. Yay!